Welcome back to the hat story of Newcastle under Lion. Last week I revealed that I was going to be making a town crier tricorn hat which is inspired by this photo. This is Frank Shufferbotham, he was a town crier in Newcastle in 1979. And the second hat that I'm going to be making is a very wide brimmed wedding hat and that's inspired by this photo which is of a wedding party from the 1920s in Newcastle under Lyme. If you haven't seen the last video and you want to go back and watch it then I will put the link in the description. Before I get into the hat making I'm going to show you a couple of snippets of history that you guys have shared with me. One thing that a lot of people mentioned to me, uh, an old business, was Bailey's. Bailey's was a caterers and confectioners founded in 1893 by Alexander Bailey and also by Joseph Bailey Jr who was his son in 1911. They ran this caterers, confectionery shop and cafe at 7 Iron Market, Newcastle and Lyme. They had a second shop at 30 High Street as well, so they must have been doing pretty good. Bailey's advertised themselves as the sole manufacturers of the celebrated Newcastle gingerbread, which if anybody knows where you can still get some, please let me know because it sounds amazing. People also messaged me about a lot of old local pubs and I got a couple of messages about a thing called bell ringer jugs. What's a bell ringer jug? Well, I'll tell you. Bell ringer jugs were traditionally used by the church's bell ringers to quench their thirst. The mayor of the town would pay to have the jugs filled with ale while they were in office. These jugs were made of earthenware and they were really big, so they were about 35 centimetres tall, so that's a lot of ale. Bell ringer jugs are quite rare to find now uh, and they would actually have the names of the bell ringers inscribed on the side. This last one is a group of men discussing plans during the construction of Municipal Hall on the Iron Market. The man standing to the right is believed to be John Gallimore, builder and architect. I think these tall bowler hats were so brilliant and I think I may end up making one of these for the live stream at the end of the project. These photos were provided by Brampton Museum and Art Gallery and if you would like to have a look through and see like photos and information from the history of Newcastle under Lyme then you can have a look at staffspasstrack.org.uk Last week I showed you how I prepped my felts by stiffening them and this week I'm going to be shaping and blocking the felts. The first thing that you need when you're going to shape a hat is a block to shape it on. The block that I'm going to use for the 1920s large wedding style hat is uh, a block that was actually gifted to me last week by a lovely friend from Newcastle. Uh, so thank you so much. And that means that it might even be some equipment that was used in hat shops in Newcastle, which is very cool. I'm going to take my hat block and I'm going to wrap it in some cling film. This is just to protect the wood and to stop the felt from the hat. When it gets really hot, it can sometimes stick into the wood. So now that that's got the cling film on, I'm going to set that to one side and I'm going to get my felt. I'm going to grab a little bucket with some water in. I'm going to get some dish soap. This is just fairy liquid, uh, but it's no perfume and no dyes so that it doesn't leave any marks in the felt. And I'm going to mix a little bit of that in with the water. The dish soap just helps the fibres to kind of slide over each other uh, and it makes them more stretchy so that the felt won't tear when you're pulling it. I'm going to get a little sponge that I'm going to dip in the water and I'm going to use this to disperse the soapy mixture all over the felt. You don't want it to be too wet because if it's too wet it'll take too long to dry uh, and the wetter it is the more chance you have of uh, ripping the felt. This side is the side that I stiffened so I'm going to turn this inside out so that the stiffened side is on the inside. This just means that if there's any small imperfections or anything from the stiffening process then these will be hidden away inside and the outside layer 
will be a nice fresh clean surface. So it's nice and wet and soapy, but it's still quite stiff. So something we need to do to loosen up all the fibers ready for stretching is use a lot of steam. So when it's all feeling a bit softer, I'm going to start pulling it onto the block. Now that I'm happy that the top of this has moulded to the block and that's all quite firm, I'm going to get some string and I'm going to tie it around the top of the crown. Tied some string nice and tight and I'm going to use a trusty piece of hat making equipment, the wooden spatula, to now push this string down. So I'm happy with how tall that is. And I've just been around and measured it to make sure it's all the same uh, height and that it's not wonky. And now I'm going to set this to one side to dry. I'm now going to do the same process to the black felt that I have for the town crier hat. block the crease is right at the bottom so I'll push the string all the way to the bottom of the crown and I'm now going to put both of these in front of the heater so they dry a bit quicker and I'll be back later to show you how I stretch and shape the brim.